Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm doing some French country thrift flips using IED transfers, stamps and moulds. For our first project, I'm going to be using these hardcover books that I thrifted. I am going to be covering them with drop cloth. Now I've done this before. I will make sure that I include the video where I have quite an in-depth tutorial on this. But basically I've got the drop cloth, I've laid the book down on top of it, and I am just measuring out to make sure that it's going to fit each of the books the same. And then I'm going to cut out three lengths of the drop cloth. Because the drop cloth is a little bit see-through and my books are a few different colors, I'm going to paint each of them with one coat of Dixie Belle's Cashmere Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a lovely cream tone. It's going to be a really great base. I just didn't want to be able to see the different colors underneath. I felt like it would detract from the design that we're going to create. So each one of these is going to get one coat. Next, I'm going to use my little craft iron and I'm going to iron the drop cloth a little bit. This is just going to smooth it out a little bit to make there be less wrinkles when I'm covering each of the books. Next, we're going to start covering the books. I've laid out my drop cloth. I'm going to position my book and then I'm going to be using hot glue to attach it today. So I'm going to open up the cover. I'm going to lay down a strip of hot glue. Make sure you're being really careful while you're doing this. Then I'm going to lift the book up and then very carefully press the side of the drop cloth down. I'm just using a little transfer stick to do this so I don't burn my fingers. I'm repeating the same process on the other side, although I did have to trim off a little bit of excess drop cloth here. Make sure as you're doing this that you pull that drop cloth tight at all times. I'm then going to trim off some of the excess. You definitely want to do this, otherwise sometimes the drop cloth can become a little bit bulky and the book does not close properly. Next, I'm going to make a little cut near the spine of the book. This is so that we're able to fold part of the drop cloth over. I'm going to repeat the same process on both sides. Remember, you can find a full product list in the description of this video and most of these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. If you don't have access to drop cloth to cover your books, you could perhaps use a different type of material, perhaps some burlap. You could also paint the books instead. It just depends what look you're going for. I really love the look of the drop cloth on the books. I feel like it just gives it a lovely earthy vintage natural feel. My vision for this project today is vintage gardening books. I felt like I wanted to create something that would look really cute sitting on a coffee table and I definitely wanted to use more of IOD's seed catalogue transfer. I'm a little bit obsessed with it right now. Once I have all the sides glued down, I'm going to trim off the excess from the top of the spine and glue down the excess drop cloth and then I will repeat the same process for the bottom of the book as well. Once I'm finished covering my book, I need to decide how I'm going to decorate it. I'm going to use this lovely design from IOD's Seed Catalog Transfer, and I'm placing the design on top of the book. This is the front cover. I've laid the transfer down, and you can see I'm rubbing over the entire thing, and then I pick a corner, and I start lifting that plastic as I'm rubbing. You definitely wanna go slow here, especially if there's lots of small parts to your transfer. Drop cloth is really great for using transfers with. It does tend to stick really well, but I'm also bracing and holding the fabric down in places while I'm doing this so that I don't accidentally shift and pull that transfer off. I'm then going to burnish it really, really well. I'm then using a little piece of text that's from the same transfer pack. This is part of a design that I trimmed off in one of my previous videos. Here you especially need to hold that fabric in place while you are rubbing your transfer down. 
For our second book, I'm using another design from the seed catalogue. I'm repeating the same steps as before, peeling the backing off and then pressing my transfer down. So again, just be very mindful of the fact that you are putting this on drop cloth and it does tend to move and shift and you want to just make sure that you're holding that still while you're doing that and make sure you take your time. If you don't have access to these transfers, you could possibly use some decoupage paper instead. For the spine of this book, I'm going to take some text from the ephemeral melange transfer. I'm going to trim off part of that and that's going to be on the side. I wanted to stick with sayings or titles that were floral related. So I felt that the ephemeral melange transfer paired really well with the seed catalog design. If you don't have this particular transfer, you could perhaps use some stamps instead. For the third book, I'm going to grab another design from the seed catalog. This is a really, really sweet one and I'm glad that I can use it on this project. So again, I'm going to position it and then press down. Now the difference between this one and the other transfers that we were using is this is one solid design. This definitely makes it a little bit easier when it comes to transferring your image because it's all attached. There's no little tiny pieces to forget or rip. It's all one piece and it makes it a lot easier to get that all down. So I'm working really hard on the uh, spine of the book here because there is a little bit of an indent and then I'm going to pick up a corner and start rubbing the design down. And you can see as I start to pull that plastic away, it is coming away really easily and quite quickly. For the spine of this book, I'm also taking a part of some text from the ephemeral melange transfer. I feel like this will pair really well. So I'm just trimming off the part that I need and then adding it to the spine of the book. Again, just go really slow here. There is some fabric here that's a little bit looser than on the cover. So you just definitely need to take your time. So these books that we've created today are decor pieces, but to make them last a little bit longer and protect them, I'm going to give each book two coats of Dixie Belle's flat clear coat. I feel like that this will protect the transfer, but it will also make that drop cloth a little bit stiffer. So it's probably less likely to wrinkle and crease and crack that transfer. So two coats of this just to add a little bit of extra protection. And here are our finished floral books. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think that they would look really sweet on a coffee table, on a sideboard, anywhere really. Let me know what you think of these in the comments. For my next project, I'm going to be using these embroidery hoops that I picked up at the thrift store. I'm going to be creating some little artwork with these. So I'm going to cut out some drop cloth for each of the embroidery hoops. I always try and cut a little bit extra so that I make sure I don't come up short, but also so that I can pick the best part of the fabric that I like because in drop cloth, sometimes there'll be parts of the fabric that look just a little bit subtly different. I'm going to be using IOD's Rural Scenes stamp. This is a beautiful design with so many gorgeous little scenes to choose from. For my first one, I've selected this little house with the trees. I'm placing the stamp on a thin mount and I'm going to be using IOD's black ink shortly. Before that, I did decide to iron it a little bit just to make sure that it was free of creases and so that it would be able to be stamped well. I didn't want a crease to ruin my stamping impression. 
So my stamp is on the Thin Mount. I'm using IOD's Permanent Black Ink. I'm inking this up more than I would on something else because fabric tends to soak up that ink and I want to make sure that you can see the design. So I'm going to very carefully position where I want it to go and then I'm going to press down. Something else when you're stamping fabric is that you want to apply a bit more pressure than you usually would. Once I think I've applied enough pressure, I will very carefully lift my stamp straight up. For my next design, I'm going to select a sweet little horse and carriage scene. I've put that on the clear mount and I'm going to ink it up really well. Remember to wipe up any excess ink before you do any stamping because that will come out on your design. So I've got my stamp ready to go. I will position it in the center and then press down. Again, you want to use a bit more pressure here so that you can get a good impression and then you'll want to lift your stamp straight up. Next, I'm going to be using some casting resin and I'm going to be adding them to IOD's Dainty Flourishes mold and also the Classic Elements mold. I'm going to be getting some embellishments for our embroidery hoops. I'm pouring my resin in. This sets pretty quick in about 10 minutes. While that is setting, I'm going to paint my embroidery hoops with Dixie Bell's Cashmere Chalk Mineral Paint. This is a lovely cream tone and I'm going to paint the entire hoop for both of them inside and out. I feel like it will feel like a much more finished project if I do that and then I'll let those dry before the next step. Now that the hoops are dry, I can add my stamped drop cloth. So I'm going to position it on the smaller hoop. And then once I've got that centered, I will position the larger hoop with the screw attachment on the top over the top. And I'm just holding it down as I tighten that screw so that the fabric is tight. Next, I'm going to take my scissors and trim off the excess fabric from around the back. Now that I have my design in, we can have a look at embellishing the hoop itself. So I've got this lovely design here. I'm going to be using Gorilla Super Glue Gel. Now these are still relatively flexible, so I'm able to manipulate them and bend them the way I want. I am doing this with the design in because it would be too hard to try and put this together without the fabric. I just feel like this has definitely got to be the last step. Now I'm taking some of these lovely swirls from the Dainty Flourishes mold and I'm going to position them around the outside and again these are still pretty fresh castings so the resin is still flexible. If you have pieces that have set a while ago you can always heat them up with a heat gun and that will make them a little bit more flexible. So you can see I'm holding it in place and bending it the way I want. This super glue is really good. It does tend to set up pretty quick. So I'm going to repeat the same steps on both sides. Next, I'm going to put the artwork into the second embroidery hoop and I'm going to position the design and put the larger hoop over the top. Again, just making sure that that fabric is nice and tight. I'm going to add the little screw. If you ever have trouble with the screw, remember you can use a flathead screwdriver to tighten it. That makes it a little bit easier. I'm trimming off the back of the excess fabric as well. I'm then going to be using the same molds as the first design, adding a little bit of glue up the top and manipulating my castings to fit and then adding the dainty flourishes around the outside. So I did cast these twice. I definitely recommend resin for this, not clay. I feel like clay would probably just break. So with these little artworks, my inspiration was definitely those lovely ornate round frames that you see a lot of old artworks in. And now I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's Cashmere Chalk Mineral Paint to the castings. I probably should have done this before I attached them, but I didn't realize that there would be a noticeable difference between the tone of the resin and the paint. So I'm going to just go over the top of the castings and add a little bit more paint to the hoops so that it all ties and blends together a little bit better.
To give these more of a vintage feel, I'm then using some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Brown. I have a small artist brush and I'm working it into the details of the castings and then wiping back the excess with a cloth and also a baby wipe in the areas where I want to take a little bit more off. I'm going to repeat the same process on both of the frames. I personally love using oval and round frames in my home decor when I'm doing my crafts. I've done quite a few videos using them, but the trouble is they are tricky to find. So I felt like perhaps this could be a good alternative if you cannot find those round or oval frames that you're looking for. A lot of us do have access to embroidery hoops. So now I hope that I've demonstrated that you can then use IOD molds to embellish them and make them look more like frames. Let me know in the comments if you think that this could perhaps be a good alternative. And here's a look at our finished projects. I'm really happy with how these turned out. I think they look very sweet. They're no longer just simple embroidery hoops. I feel like they're cute little artworks now, but let me know what you think of these in the comments. Is this a hit or a miss? Our final project today is this little wooden caddy tray. I found this for a few dollars and I've been wanting to do it up. My first step after cleaning is to remove the little handle. There's a little screw on each side that I'm going to take out. I feel like this is just going to make this project a little bit easier. I'm going to be using Hotel Robe by Fusion. This is a milk paint that I have not tried yet. I've been wanting to try Hotel Robe. It's a lovely bright white. I'm mixing one cap full of my milk paint to one cap full of water and stirring really well. You have to do equal parts. I'm then going to be using a natural brick bristle brush to apply a thick even coat. So I'm coming in pretty thick here because I don't want to have to do lots of subsequent coats. I want to go nice and thick because we want to achieve that wonderful cracking and chipping that I am obsessed with. So I'm going to work my way around this little caddy and coat the entire thing. I know I've been using milk paint a lot in my videos. I hope you guys aren't sick of it. It's just such a fun and unique paint to use. It can be unpredictable, but I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at predicting how it's going to respond to different surfaces. If you want a look that is not chipped, you can definitely use it on a raw wood surface and you will not get any chipping. A surface like this that's already sealed will definitely achieve some chipping. I did decide here to come back in with just a little bit more paint. The first coat isn't completely dry, but I felt like it was a little bit thinner than I wanted. So I'm coming in with a bit more of a thicker coat here because I don't wanna have to come back in with lots of extra coats. I'm then coming in with my heat gun to speed up the drying process and get some of that cracking that we love. And here you can see the end result. I've got some wonderful cracking and chipping happening already. I just love this effect. It is so authentically aged now. It's definitely not something that you can really replicate. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm now using some 220 grit sandpaper to sand it back. You can see that as I'm sanding the areas that had lots of cracking, I'm getting a wonderful chippy look. I'm going to work my way around the caddy and sand it well to remove any loose paint and I'll also hit those edges. I also decided that with the paint I had left that I would paint the bottom of the tray instead of sanding it back. I felt this felt a bit more complete doing it this way. To seal my caddy, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in clear. I'll apply the wax to the entire caddy and then I will buff it back with a microfiber cloth. You definitely want to use wax or perhaps hemp oil to seal this. It's not recommended that you use a water-based sealer as it can often reactivate your paint. Now it's time to reattach the handle.
Once I had the handle in place, I felt like it was looking a little bit too new compared to the tray. So I grabbed some of Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in white. I have that on a microfiber cloth and I'm working it into the grooves of this wood and it's sinking in really nicely and giving it more of an aged finish. And here's our finished rustic caddy. I love how this turned out. I love anything with milk paint on it. It was fun to use Fusion's hotel robe color. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's projects and that's given you some different ideas on how you can use those transfers, stamps and molds to create home decor for your home. Let me know in the comments if you had a favorite project from today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.